hello friends so welcome to lecture series on uh, essential mathematics for machine learning now let us come to bayes theorem in this bayes theorem and random variables so what is bayes theorem basically let e1 e2 and en be n non empty events that constitute a partition of a sample space s so we have already discussed the partition is basically what if you are saying that e1 e2 and up to en are the partition that means the union of e1 e2 up to en is s that is a sample space and the intersection of any two uh, any two different event is phi so that means a partition so suppose these are the partition and a is any event of the non of non zero probability then probability of any ei i may be 1 2 3 up to n given a is given by probability of uh, ei only for that i into probability of a given ei upon sum of all this so so how we obtain this given to us is e1 e2 up to e1 these are partition of partitions of a sample space s okay now we want to calculate probability of as we as see here probability of uh, ei given a so as per the definition of uh, condition probability this is nothing but probability of ei intersection with a upon probability of a okay now what is probability of ei intersection of with a by the multiplication uh, rule this is nothing but probability of ei probability of uh, probability of ei multiplied by probability of uh, a given ei okay and this pa from the uh, total probability will be given by summation i from 1 to n p of ei probability of ei multiplied by a given ei so this we have already discussed in last class that how we can find out uh, uh, pa i mean uh, from the total probability so that is given by this expression and that is simply by the uh, multiplication rule we can say that it is this expression so in this way this is a required expression here which is basically the bayes theorem now let us discuss one example based on this so suppose you are having three identical boxes 1 2 and 3 each containing three coins okay so suppose you are having three boxes boxes box 1 box 2 box 3 each is having three coins okay box 1 contains all gold coins so that means three coins that means three gold all the three gold coins are here box 2 contain two gold coins and one silver coin that means uh, box 2 contain two gold and one silver okay in box 3 uh, it is one gold and two silver coins so in box 3 it is one gold and two silver coins so that is given to you okay we are having three boxes and these are the different coins box 1 three gold box 2 two gold and one silver box 3 one gold and two silver now a person chooses a box at random and takes out a coin okay if the coin is gold what is the probability that it is drawn from the box 3 so let us suppose uh, a is the event of getting gold coin gold coin suppose e1 is the event of getting box 1 getting box 1 okay you can write e2 is getting box 2 and e3 uh, e getting 
box 3. Now you want to you want to find out what the probability that it is drawn from the box 3 that means you want to calculate E3 given A okay. and that will be nothing but P of E3. So, probability of E3 uh, multiply A given E I E given E3 that is from the box 3 divided by a probability of E1 probability of A given E1 plus probability of E2 multiplied the probability of A given E2 plus probability of E3 into probability of A given E3. So, now what is probability of E3? E3 means probability of uh, getting box 3. So, there are 3 boxes you are having identical boxes 1, 2 and 3. So, all are equal probabilities. So, probability of choosing one box any one box is 1 by 3 definitely. So, it is 1 by 3 into probability of getting a gold, gold coin when it is taken from the box 3. So, probability of getting a gold coin from the box 3 is basically 1 upon 3 because number of gold coins are 1 and total coins are 3. So, it is basically 1 upon 3 divided by. So, here again P of E 1 is 1 upon 3. Now, probability of A that is getting gold coin from box 1. From box 1 it is all the coins are gold. So, it is 3 upon 3 plus. Now, uh, probability of E 2 is again 1 by 3 into probability of A when it is getting from the box 2. So, from box 2 it is uh, 2 gold coins total coins are 3. So, it is 2 upon 3 plus probability of E 3 is 1 by 3 probability of A that means getting gold coin from probability of from box 3 that we have already computed it is 1 by 3. So, now if you solve it so that will be nothing but 1 upon 3 upon that is 3 5 6 that is 6 upon 3. So, that is uh, 5 plus 1 6. So, it is what uh, it is uh, if you cancel 1 by 3 from numerator and denominator. So, it is 1 by 3 upon 3 plus 2 5 plus 1 6 6 upon 3. So, that is basically 3 3 cancels out. So, it is 1 by 6. So, that will be required probability. Okay. Now, random variables. So, a random variable is some uncertain quantity with an associated probability distribution over, uh, over the values it can assume. Formally, a random variable is a function x from s to r. Basically, we define random variable as a function from s to r. Now, the range of x is denoted by x s which is all x s such that s belongs to x. That is basically range of range of uh, x random variable x. Now, if we uh, in the in terms of probability probability of x when a small x is given to you equal to small x is nothing but probability of all those x belongs to s where x s is equal to small x. Okay. So, that is how we can define out uh, uh, random variables in terms of probability. Now, let us discuss this with an example. Suppose, uh, you are uh, you are finding number of heads in tossing 2 coins. Okay. You are tossing a coin 2 times. So, you are finding number of heads. So, uh, now if you are tossing coins 2 coins. So, sample space will be what either head head, head tail, tail head or tail tail. These are the only 4 combinations, only 4 possibilities. Tossing 2 coins. Now, if you are saying x is a random variable which is the number of heads. So, number of heads may be 0, number of heads may be 1, number of heads may be 2, it cannot be 3 because you are uh, tossing only 2 coins. Now, if you are finding p of x, x may be 0 x may be 1, x may be 2. Okay. So, probability if you are if you are taking 0 heads. So, how many cases for 0 heads? So, there is only one case where both are tail. So, one case out of how many? Out of 4. So, that will be 1 by 4 favorable upon total. Favorable is one case, total are 4. One head. 
for one head there are two cases so it is 2 upon 4 or 1 by 2 for two heads so it is one only one case so it is 1 by 4 so that will be basically px for this problem okay now for the second example suppose the sum of values obtained so suppose you are rolling two dice simultaneously okay rolling two dice. So, now uh, the sum is either starts the minimum sum is 2 when it is 1 and 1 and the maximum sum is 12. So, x is a random variable which can take values from 2 to 12, 2, 3, 4 up to 12. Okay. Now, if you want to compute p of x, so for 2 it is only one case 1, 1 when both the die will turn up to be 1 and total probability is I mean total cases are 36, 6 on one die, 6 on other die, 6 into 6 is 36. So, probability will be I mean 1 upon 36. Now, for 3 it is 1, 2 or 2, 1. So, that means 2 upon 36, similarly 3 upon 36 okay. and uh, the last case for 12 it will be uh, for 12 it will be 1 upon 36. So, it will first increase and then decrease see if you if you if you want to compute the complete table of this. So, it will be like this you will take x as uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and probability of x will be for 2 it is 1 by 36 for 3 it is 2 by 36 for 4 it is 3 by 36, for 5 it is 4 by 36, for 6 it is 6 by 36 and then it start decreasing. Okay, for 7 it is 6 by 36, for 8 it is now 5 by 36. So, now it is 1 by 36 here, it is 2 by 36 here, it is 3 by 36 here, it is 4 by 36 here that the cases you can easily obtain see if you want to if you want to draw the cases for this 4. So, for 4 it is uh, 1 3 uh, 2 2 then it is 3 1. So, you can similarly draw all the possible cases. So, that will be the basically you can get the uh, probability for different x for this case. Now, what is cumulative distribution function CDF? The cumulative distribution function CDF or the distribution function gives the probability that a random variable is at most a certain value. See, we are having a, a small x. So, the probability that the random variable is always less than or equal to small x is simply the is simply a CDF of that x okay, for every x in R. So, that is that is how we can define CDF. Now, we will discuss some examples to for the uh, better understanding of this. First, we will cover all the definitions. So, now what is discrete random variable? So, it is a random variable that has countable range and assumes each value in its range with positive probability. So, it is discrete that means it has a countable range and uh, it uh, assumes in its range with positive probability as mentioned. Discrete random variables are completely specified by their probability mass function. Okay. And what is probability mass function? It is a function from x s to 0 1 which satisfy the following two properties. The two properties are number 1 the probability mass function must be greater than or equal to 0 for every x okay. and number 2 the sum of all the probability mass functions. I mean the sum of all this uh, functions must be 1. So, these are the two basic properties and then we can say that it will be a probability mass function for, for discrete random variables. Now, how can you define uh, uh, it for continuous case I mean continuous random variables. So, for continuous random variable we can define it like this a continuous random variable is a random variable that has an uncountable range and whose CDF that is fx capital fx 
is a continuous function which are completely specified by their probability density function PDF here we call it PDF. For discrete case it is probability mass function for continuous case it is probability density function and which again satisfy two properties the two properties are number one it must be non negative for every x and number two because it is continuous. So, here comes out to be integration. So, the integral from minus infinity plus infinity should be 1. So, in other words we can say this as area if you take the prob uh, probability density function if you draw the area the entire area under the curve must be 1. Okay. So, the main difference for probability density function and probability mass function is mass function is for discrete case it is for continuous case. The second one is of course, the first property is same that uh, f x must be greater than equal to 0 for every x. Here in probability mass function you are having sum of all the uh, sum of all the functions and here we are having integral from minus infinity plus infinity that is the only difference. Now, we are having certain properties. The first property is if you want to find out between a and b that means you take from b up to b and subtract up to a that will give from a to b and that is nothing but cdf cdf at x equal to b and cdf at x equal to a this capital f is uh, cumulative distribution function okay so it is cdf at x equal to b and cdf at x equal to a this is the first uh, property the next property is suppose you want to compute cdf at x equal to x at capital x equal to small x okay so, that is nothing but for the continuous case it will be nothing but integral from minus infinity to x because you want to find out up to x up to small x. So, if you want to find out up to small x that means that means you have to integrate from minus infinity up to x. So, that area from minus infinity up to x that will give uh, CDF when uh, capital X is small x. Okay, that, that you can understand from here also. So, suppose you want to compute, so suppose it, it is some continuous case and for this x, for this small x you want to compute CDF. So, f x, f at x equal to x that means probability of x less than equal to x means here this area. So, you want to compute this area. So, this area is what? This area is basically integral minus infinity to x f x dx f x you can write x here or you can write f x x here ok. So, that is f x t so that is not a that is notational problem only. So, basically that function will come here and that is in minus root to x. Now, if x is discrete so that means we have to take the sum sum up to sum up to x sum up to x you have to find. So, that will give uh, basically uh, CDF. So, these are the basically relation between cumulative distribution function or uh, probability mass function or uh, probability density function. Okay. Now, if you want to compute this probability density or mass function for any small x then that 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 is that will be given by you first find probability when x is less than equal to x that is up to x up to x and when you subtract with x le strictly less than x. So, that will give probability when x equal to x. Okay. So, in no notationally we can also write it like this uh, when x is discrete and for continuous case it is simply derivative because uh, because uh, this is this is simply this is simply integral. So, basically derivative will come for in case of continuous uh, if uh, distribution is a continuous distribution. So, now let us come to few examples. Now, first problem is a coin is known to come up heads three times as often as tails. Okay. This coin is tossed three times. Let x denote the number of tails that appear. Determine the probability mass function and cumulative distribution function of x, of x and also find probability when x is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 2. So, let us discuss this example. So, what is what x denote x is the number of tails that appear three times we are throwing ok. So, x may be either 0, 1 
2 or 3. These are the axis number of tails, number of tails. Okay. Now, what will be probability of x? First, it is uh, it is not the equal probability of head and tail. Here, the probability of head uh, come out to be head is three times as often as tails. So, basically, probability of getting head is three by four, and it probability of getting tail is one by four. Okay. Now, if if there is a if if we are finding 0 tail. So, out of 3 coins there is no tail okay. and uh, probability of getting head is 3 by 4 and probability of getting tail is 1 by 4. So, that is very clear because you see that it is 0. You can see here because uh, mm, there is no tail that means all 3 are head. So, that means 3 by 4 into 3 by 4 into 3 by 4. Okay. Now, if if you are taking so, this is basically uh, this is uh, p x for this. Now, for 1 when x equal to 1, when x equal to 1 out of 3 cases any one case it may be take out to be 1. There are we are costing 3 coins we want 1 head it may be in the first place, second place or third place. So, that is 3 c 1 total cases and 3 by 4 getting head is simply getting head is simply uh, 2 and 1 by 4 is 1. Okay. So, 3 by 4 into 3 by 4. Now, for 2. So, for 2 it will be 3 c 2 3 by 4 raised to power 1 and uh, 1 by 4 is whole square. So, that will come 2 tails and for x equal to 3 uh, for uh, p x equal to 3 that will be sorry that will be 3 c 3 and 1 by 4 is to power 3. Okay. So, that will be basically distribution function of this. Okay. I mean th that will be simply uh, what we call that will be simply p m f. Okay. So, so what we have what we have seen when x equal to 0 1 2 or 3 let us write it neatly. So, p x will be here it is uh, here it is 3 by 4 whole is to power 3 here it is 3 c 1 3 by 4 square into 1 by 4 here it is 3 c 2 3 by 4 uh, 3 by 4 it is uh, 1 1 by 4 whole square it is uh, 3 c 3 1 by 4 whole is to power 3. So, suppose this value is x 1 suppose this value is x 1 x 2 suppose this value is x 3 suppose value is x 4. Okay. So, first of all all probabilities are our probabilities are greater than equal to 0 of course and if you sum up all probabilities so this will come out to be 1. So, you can check. Okay. Basically if you take x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 plus x 4. So, that will be nothing but uh, 3 by 4 plus 1 by 4 whole is to power whole is to power 3 and that is 1. This is simply by binomial theorem. Okay. So, so hence it is it is basically probability mass function. Now, now if you want to compute CDF of this, so what will be CDF? Cumulative distribution function. So, we want to calculate probability. So, when x is suppose you want to compute when x is less than 0. So, when x is less than 0, so, we want to compute CDF, it is CDF basically. So, CDF we denote by f x x. Okay. So, if you if x is less than 0, so it is it is 0 because x can take the value 0, 1, 2 or 3. If suppose x is negative, so there is no probability that is 0. Now, if x, x is less than 1 or greater than equal to 0, okay. if x is between 0 and 1. Then in that case, suppose uh, in that case it simply take the value when x equal to 0 and that is simply x 1. So, that would be simply x 1. Because if you take any other value between 0 and 1, there is no other no probability except 0. Now, when x is between 2 and 1, it will be simply 
x1 plus x2 okay now if you take x less than 3 greater than or equal to 2 so that will be nothing but x1 plus x2 plus x3 and when x is uh, greater than or equal to 3 that is 1 so this will be the cdf of this uh, x so basically if you draw it so it will be some step uh, step type function okay when x is 0 when x is less than 0 it will be a 0 excluding this when x is between 0 and 1 so it is some x1 which is somewhat here suppose this is inclusive when x is between 1 and 2 1 and 2 it will be something like like 1 and 2 so it is hollow here comes here and when between 2 and 3 2 and 3 it will go here 2 and 3 it is hollow here hollow here and uh, after 3 it will be 1 so this is basically 1 ok so this is this type of function now next we want to compute x uh, probability when x is between 1 and 2 so that is uh, given here when 1 and 2 is simply x1 plus x2 so you simply add these two terms and you will get the answer of the probability when x is between 1 and 2 ok so this is for the discrete case now let us discuss one for continuous case now suppose a continuous random variable x has a pdf given by this expression so first you find first you want to find out for which k it will be a pdf so for pdf first of all for all x this must be greater than or equal to 0 so it is equal to 0 and it must be greater than or equal to 0 that means k must be greater than or equal to 0 that is certain next is total area must be 1 now total area means now here elsewhere it is 0 that means integral from 0 to 1 must be 1 so that will give the value of k so integral basic definition is integral this should be 1 now this implies integral from 0 to 1 kx square dx should be 1 and this implies k into x cube upon 3 from 0 to 1 should be 1 so it implies k is equal to 3 so that means k the value of k is 3 now if you want to find out the cdf of this x so what is fx now fx now is 3 it is 3 x square when x is between 0 and 1 and 0 otherwise so how can you find cdf of x so cdf of x will be simply fx x so that will be probability when x is less than or equal to x and that is given by minus minus to x fx dx so here here what is fx fx is now 3x square and that is defined between 0 and 1 so between 0 and 1 uh, so we can say that from minus infinity to 0 it will be 0 because otherwise it is 0 so it will be defined only for 0 to x so we can say that it will be further equal to 0 to 1 it is 3 x square dx and that will be 3 x cube by 3 0 to 1 so that will be ok 0 to x so that will be 0 to x sorry because it is uh, it is 0 to x ok so 0 to x it will be it will be uh, x cube so what will be the cdf now so cdf will be basically uh, when x is less than 0 it will be 0 less than equal to 0 it will be 0 ok and between 0 and 1 it will be x cube and when x is greater than equal to 1 it is 1 so this is how we can define the cdf of uh, x ok so we have seen so in this lecture we have seen that uh, uh, what is uh, Bayes theorem and uh, how we can find out uh, uh, what is probability mass function density function and how we can find a uh, commutative distribution function if pdf is known if probability mass function is known or vice or vice versa 
So, in the next lecture, we will see uh, how we can find expectation, variance, co covariance, etc. Thank you.